sort of add to that, sometimes I feel it very overwhelming. I find there's so many competencies. How am I in one year supposed to stay competent in so much? Mm -hmm. I think there are 166 competency statements in this book. And when we all enter practice as a dietitian, we're generalists, and this is our competency. And we're pretty proud of that as dietitians because we can go into so many different practice areas. But once we start working, we hit the workforce, our competency um, becomes um, more, ex we develop expertise, we lose the breadth, and um, that's where this tool, um, you really have to find yourself in it and reflect on the competencies that are re relevant to your practice. You're mm -hmm. definitely not expected to be competent in all of these practice areas, in all of these competencies. I think one of the, um, uh, one of the issues that, uh, that <coughs> I hear come up quite often is, well, what if I do it wrong? And I think um, that you'll probably agree with me, but there is no right or wrong way to complete it. There are um, certainly ways to make it more useful, and I think that the auditing process that NSDA does helps, uh, the feedback helps members define, if, if you will, um, their area of practice more so than saying it's wrong, correct? Can you, can Absolutely. You build on that? The, the auditing process is, um, it's often misunderstood um, in that it's um, a penalty or you're being audited because you have made a mistake, but everybody's audited. Um, members are randomly selected to be audited, and it's our peers who are reviewing. So we're, we're really doing this to be supportive of the membership. Um, on the other hand, in terms of our accountability as a profession, as a college to government, to in the public interest, it's also really due diligence to ensure that members are maintaining their competency to practice safely. And, and this is the only way really the, a college or regulatory body has to provide that assurance to the public. This is it. Because nobody's coming and watching dietitians practice and saying, yes or no, you're competent. This is it. This is our documentation that I'm, I'm practicing safe. Does that answer your question? Yeah. So when people get feedback, it's, it's positive and helpful feedback. It's not somebody saying you've done this wrong. Absolutely not. The purpose of the audit is to be proactive and supportive. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Can you answer something for me related to carrying goals over? In 2008 and 2009, I had identified ethics in my practice as a goal. And um, I carry that over for 2009 and 2010. And so in this year, it has changed. Um, and more growth, more opportunities um, have presented themselves. And so can I do that again? Can I carry it forward, keep doing that? Mm -hmm. so yes, you can. You can carry over your goal to the next year. It's usually the exception rather than the rule, and I'll explain. Um, what I would suggest, um, and I don't know how your actual goal was written, um, I would suggest perhaps making the goal a little bit more specific. And it could be that every year your goal is related to ethics, but it's such a broad um, subject area that you could have a, um, a goal every year on ethics and the individual topic be more specific. Um, if you do develop a goal and you really don't find you made much progress with it and you want to really tackle that goal the next year, that's fine. Um, what, uh, what we often see through the audits is that then the evaluation form that's submitted is actually blank. I did not meet my goal. I will work on it next year. And that's really not acceptable, and that's not likely what you've done. Mm -hmm. But um, then document the learning activities you did participate in, or perhaps there are other learning activities, and there almost always are. 
to maybe choose another goal, rephrase it, and you know this this is what else I learned this year to impact my practice. But next year, yes, I will tackle the, my initial goal because I know there are more opportunities and I'm a little more specific in what I really want to learn about. Great. Thank you very much. It's like a feeling, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so it's good to you know you had ethics and the, you know, the goals and the learning outcomes are kind of changing and you're learning from it. That's awesome. So that it's nice to know that you can sort of do maybe as a theme ethics for a couple uh, CDTs. Mm -hmm. It's such a it's such because a it huge is broad. Topic. Yes. You could yeah. do that every year and still have really new learning that's applicable to your mm -hmm. practice, affecting yeah. your practice. So that yeah. Mm -hmm. Some some goals written, for example, as you know, I want to learn more about current nutrition. That's just so broad. You could mm -hmm. have that as a goal every year and you'd never know you met the goal because it's just mm -hmm. so broad. So to yeah. be as specific as possible in each year, then yeah. That's ideal, so you know you've met the goal or not. Can I just add one little uh, question to that? So could I apply it to different dimensions then, right? Like I could apply the ethics to um, the benefits that my client population have um, experienced, um, but then another year maybe apply it to um, um, my professional practice itself. Absolutely. Okay, great. Absolutely. Terrific. Thank you.